Hey everyone, today we have with us Mr. Amarpreet Kalkar, who is an alumni of IIM Koikor Batch of 2004. He is a bike enthusiast and has taken roads less travel. He is the founder of two technology startups, Humantic and Ferro. For Humantic is basically a technology startup which provides web based customer service, while Ferro is a, a social intelligence startup. And we would love to hear more about these startups from the founder itself. So, hey Amarpreet, uh, can, you, can you tell our viewers? in detail about uh, Ferrol and Humanity. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, it's good to be here, Sanjay. Thanks for having me here. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a whole bunch of years since I passed out of you know this place. Uh, but this place, first of all, I must say, is still as amazing as ever. Much bigger now. Um, and my journey kind of started here in some ways. Um, you know, I'll come to that maybe in a little bit. But uh, so at uh, Ferrol and you know Humantic, so what we do is provide consumer analytics and insights. So an insight into consumer behavior. We largely try to learn that out of social data. So what people are saying out there, what can we learn about you know, the consumers, the market, and uh, provide that to businesses that could serve the customer better if they have those insights. So Froll was when, where we started. Um, Froll's a marketing analytics provider so we largely work with b2c you know marketing teams you know it could be for example a flipkart or a titan you know it could be a we work with some of the media channels etc so what is happening in real time uh, about their consumers if flipkart just finished big billion days and amazon was running you know great india sale how did consumers react to it you know which worked better which did not which had issues which not you can go very deep into consumer psyche by looking at what they say on social media, right? So, so Froll's been, you know, journey on the marketing analytics, you know, path. Humantic kind of has sprung out of what we've been doing at Froll. So one of the things that we do, so we dive quite deep into consumer behavior, you know, when we, when we're doing, uh, when taking a look at social data. So one of the things we do is we try to understand the behavior of people right down to each individual. So for each individual, we try to predict, you know, what they will do, how they will behave, what their intent is, what their personality is for that matter. So with Humantic, Humantic's focused on uh, HR recruitment uh, right now. So HR um, has been doing soft skills, personality assessment for 50 plus years. You know, it's, uh, it's a pretty large part of generally any assessment process. So, so far they've used, um, like they use psychometric tests, you know, to evaluate anyone's personality where someone has to go through attempt, you know, 30, 50, 100 questions over maybe an hour, half an hour. So we completely, completely change that. So we predict people's personality without them having to take a test by making use of data that's already out there about people. So, so there's um, like, concept based off around 30 years of research in psycholinguistics, psychometrics, etc. Mm -hmm. So where you can predict someone's personality by looking at their language usage patterns, right. by looking at their social activity, you know, patterns. Right. So, so it becomes, um, it becomes a kind of disruptive, you could say, because someone, something that required someone to take a test for an hour can now be done without any test at all. So that's what Humantic uh, does. But they're both kind of tied at the hip in terms of take existing data, use that to learn more about consumers. Right. Nice, very nice to hear about all this technological aspect and how we can implement this in real life. Uh, but before from working full time as an entrepreneur, you were working as a product manager, right? Right. And so what, how was your journey from a product manager to starting two full phase technology startups then? What was your real inspiration in starting? Yeah, so the, um, it goes back, um, it goes back a long time, uh, was, uh, when I was finishing my engineering, which was in 2000, so a long time ago, uh, you guys must be in well, primary school, I suppose, <laughs> yeah, so, so I got in, so AI was, there was kind of an AI, you know, wave late 90s or so too, so there have been two, three AI waves, you know, since it started. And now, of course, you know, 20, 13, 14 onwards, there's again a very, very, you know, big impetus on uh, AI. So I got interested in AI back then. So I wanted to build technology products, you know, for a long time I wanted to do that. 
I wanted to build intelligent products. So I, so that was sort of the thought. So it's in fact better, let me just add, if you find a market problem and then you devise what technology will solve that problem, that's a great way to become an entrepreneur. It didn't happen like that in my case. So it was a little bit of, you know, hammer looking for a nail because uh, the whole thing driving my thought was got to, things need to be smarter, things need to be more evolved, they need to be more intelligent. So that had been the driving thought. 2010, you know, fast forward there, uh, post my MBA, post a couple of, you know, I'd been a business analyst, I'd spent, you know, a time in a product manager role with Nokia Trilogy. I said, yeah, it's been 10 years since I passed out. I'm still not building the kind of products I wanted to build. You know, I'm just doing the same stuff that has been done, you know, for a long time. So my take had been that it'll be good to be in a big company and build that because these things take, you know, enormous resources. So that's how it started with Frol uh, in 2011, uh, Frol in 2014, uh, but the startup journey in 2011, essentially. Right. So you're working in a very niche market and uh, when you build a technological product, it, it melts down to <coughs> gathering a team, very specific team, a specific set of competency. And how do you go about building your team? How do you go about hiring people, uh, citing uh, right kind of people for your venture? What was the kind of yeah. process you followed? Yeah. So it's very far from what a textbook answer would look like. I mean, it's not that one day you want to build something and next day you go put together, you know, a team and, you know, the day after you're building it out. So it depends, right? You got to have the resources. So sometimes it happens that you, I mean, it's great. It's probably the best thing. One thing I'll always stress on is that you should have a couple of co-founders. That's, that's the best thing that can be. In my case, it didn't, unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. I was joining a friend of mine as a co-founder, but he for some reason couldn't, you know, hop on. So I had to start off by myself. I didn't want to wait. I don't like waiting. So then along the way, you know, a couple of people joined me as co-founders. So that happened, but essentially, it, I would say it happens in iterative steps. Yeah. So sometimes you get lucky, like you said, maybe you have a lot of money. Maybe you have, you know, four or five people, a great team. They're very skilled at it. You know, you start with something and it just works and works. 99% of the time or maybe 99.9% .9 of the time, it doesn't work like that. So, um, you know, so you have to iterate. So I like, I started all alone. Then two people joined me as in a part-time role because they were excited about what, you know, I wanted to do. So they built out kind of the first version of the product. They moved on at some point. By then, you know, I managed to get two people uh, you know, interested, they joined me full time. Uh, so then that was three of us, you know, for a while. Then we started getting some traction, then we raised some money and then we started hiring some people. Okay. So, so I think almost about everything, whether it's how you build a product. Yeah. So like someone asked me that, um, um, you know, it's an AI product and how you build an AI product. It didn't the first version was not an AI product, it's completely okay. It was a rule, it was intelligent, but it was rule-based intelligence. Then it became somewhat intelligent, now it's much more intelligent. I'm sure you the next few iterations is gonna be much, much more intelligent. So it yeah. happens in iterations essentially. Amazing. So when entrepreneurs find something, he set some kind of rules and goals. So if I ask you like, what will be your, for you as a successful fellow, what will be a goal of success? So I would say the goals, uh, the goals uh, come about at many levels, right? So at, uh, at a very high level, impact is the goal, right? I mean, how much we can impact things the way they are, you know, make them better. So that's a, it's kind of a fuzzy goal, right? Mm -hmm. But that's kind of ultimately the goal, you could say in many ways, uh, trying to build kind of a new age, you know, uh, tech, uh, you know, tech first, intelligence first product. And then you sort of cut the goals down into smaller, you know, chunks. Right. So, and the goals evolve, you know, so it's not that the goal always stays the same. Mm -hmm. At some level, it stays the same, right? I mean, there's something in your head, you know, as, as founders on panels will always have some idea much better, it's much clearer than anyone out there would know. But in more practical terms, it, it evolves, you know, the same iterative thing happens. 
So when I started out, I was very happy. I mean, I just wanted to build intelligent products. Yeah, so that was, I mean, I was like, yeah, I mean, that's what I want to build. Let's just go ahead and do this thing. Um, and I remember like when we started, I told one of, you know, the engineers, uh, you know, who's on the team, I said, look, 70% will fail with what we want to do because it's a very, very hard problem. But that's going to be the fun of it because this is what I want to build. Then at some point when we started, when we had that product, we could say, I mean, like I said, it, it still had a lot to improve, but we could say that, yeah, this product uh, is now reasonably intelligent. So then the goal sort of became, can I build a team, you know, on an org? Uh, that'll be great if we can do that. So when that started happening, you know, so like, We've always been strong on the building side, not as much on the selling side. So then it became, can we build a successful, like a monetarily successful org? Yeah. So, so those kind of the levels, you know, how goals kind of evolve a little, but ultimately it's been about, you know, here's a very large opportunity to impact the way things are. You know, things are very staid, you know, very old fashioned at some level. Making software is going to, and is driving pretty much everything in the world software is still not very intelligent so we always think about can we make software intelligent you know start with one piece go to another piece but that's uh, sort of the end goal yeah, it's, it's amazing like listening all the how it trickled down all these things and got into a place right uh, and when you talk about an entrepreneur's journey funding is something which is very crucial for any person to be successful or right. any uh, startup to go ahead and when you were building these amazing products how was your experience pitching those products to investors and getting the, those funding, those initial fundings? What was a, uh, that experience? What kind of days those, those were? Well, it's a pretty eye-opening experience, uh, first of all. So uh, we definitely haven't had it easy with funding. Right. So, so that also depends um, on many factors, you know, what you do and where's the market. Mm -hmm. So we've always been very, very tech focused. Yeah. So like what we're doing with Froll, it's not path breaking, you know, it's um, things, there are other marketing analytics, social analytics products, you know, we're obviously trying to do it better. We do do it better, but it's not, it's an iteration. What we do with Humantic is pretty much, you know, what you'll call, you know, VCs, investors will call it a segment creating play. So you're almost creating a new segment. So that's very hard to do. So India is a pretty bad place to do something like that. So Indian investors, VCs, angels, institutional, they don't have that much appetite for technology products. Mm -hmm. Now, technology products, technology first products, let's just say, the difference is that they have a, their gestation period is longer, right? So when we look at, for example, self-driving cars, Google's been doing them since 2008, right? They're still not around. People thought maybe they'll be around by 2020. Now it looks like much later, perhaps. You know, AR, VR, we've been hearing for a while, still not mainstream, you know, far from it. So those are popular technologies, but any new technology, the investors here don't have an appetite. Uh, also because there's a lot of low hanging fruit in the Indian market. So, you know, because it's a very large market, very fast growing market. So there's a lot of, you know, dhanda businesses you could build out there. I mean, like said, find a problem, go after it, you will, you know, build pretty large businesses, you know, if you can, if you can solve the problem well. So that's definitely, definitely a big challenge. I mean, we've raised some money, you know, mostly angel money. Um, you, there's a certain way you go about doing that thing, you know, so some people do it better, some not as much. I mean, that's, that's, I would say, it, something you've got to keep in mind, you know, when you start looking at investments. As you talk passionately about what you are trying to build and these new technologies is coming in the uh, for a so what kind of suggestions you want to give to budding entrepreneurs who wants to start something of their own wants to leverage these kind of technologies sure. to build up uh, something which can have an impact on uh, in existing scenario what kind of suggestions yeah. you want to give to them? i think two three things are fundamentally important you know the the most important thing is a very very basic thing we all know but should be reiterated just start don't wait, just start what you want to do. You'll never have perfect conditions, right? You'll never have the perfect co-founders. You might not even have one like me. You will never have enough money. You'll never have enough of a safety net. None of that. So just start. Yeah. Of course, you also, 
understand whatever you're trying to do, understand it well. Yes, just start is fine, but not one fine day you wake up and say, let's do this thing, right? It's good to learn about the problem that you're trying to solve, the market, the environment, so that you don't end up wasting, you know, your time. I mean, so, you know, these are all smart people here. So it's not very hard to analyze and learn something, you know, spend a few weeks and then, you know, dive into it. But you've got to dive into it. You uh, cannot not start. It's not going to be easy uh, starting up. I mean, I've done hard, silly, foolish things and it's probably, it's easily the hardest thing, you know, I've done. So it's going to be very, very hard. Um, expect that. Very few people get lucky. Very, very few don't count on getting lucky. Most likely you'll not get lucky. And um, so be mentally very strong. Break every problem down because otherwise you just can't solve problems. And like I said earlier, it not become perfect in one go, but break it down. Let it kind of, you know, get iterated itself and uh, solve that thing. And I think that's just starting off. And then from... Um, um, how do you succeed? It's a, it's a very, very, uh, you've got to be strong on both building and selling fronts. Yeah. Yeah. So many, there are people who sell well, but can't build well. They do fairly well, reasonably, you know, early on, but later on, if there's the strong foundations not there to whatever you're doing, whether it's a tech product or a non-tech product, mm -hmm. you will not excel, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll struggle with differentiation, you'll struggle with, you know, becoming big, if that's what your goal is. But on the other side, you know, so, so building is important, but on the other side, selling, being able to sell, being able to tell a story, right? So that's also very, very critical. So we spoke about fundraising earlier, the story, really, it has to be something that people understand, they connect with, they can, you know, they get excited about. Same when you go out hiring, you know, same when you go and meet customers. So that storytelling ability, like people always talk about, you know, so Steve Jobs and storytelling and all of that. I mean, there are other great storytellers too, but storytelling, um, essentially being able to sell. So I think those are two, three things. But first of all, just jump off the bridge, you know, uh, and take, take a dive. Otherwise, you'll never start off. Wonderful. So it was very nice to hear with Sir Amit. And was, we, will, we hope that Ethan and our viewers will be benefited from this. I hope so, yes. Yeah. And we are hoping to see you again soon on our campus. Let's see when that happens. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Sanjay.